So in today's video, I'm going to bring in you guys my thoughts and opinions on the contract update situation that we have been provided with around Matty Platt and also Bobby Point. And I think the best way to describe it in a short and sweet manner is it's not particularly good news if you want in both places to stay here for the long term. But if you do go on to enjoy today's video, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and hit 100 likes on today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We're now on the road to 9,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you you haven't already with that post notification bell on it's free to do so and it does massively help out get your thoughts on as well down in the comment section down below on both Matty Platt looks like he's probably not going to be staying and we also have an update on Bobby Poynton obviously we know the club triggered his contract extension at a further season and then offered him and Brad Halliday new longer term contracts and we do have an update on both Platt and Poynton so let's waste no further time and get straight into it we'll start out firstly then with Matty Platt and his update he's only mentioned briefly in an article done by Simon Parker which was only available to the TNA premium members I do believe which you have to subscribe to or you know if you load up the article and put your phone in aeroplane mode you can also then still read it but Matty Platt has basically not agreed the new contract at this moment in time in the article it is very short and sweet but Simon Parker says it is looking increasingly unlikely that Platt will agree to the offer that's been on the table since the end of the season which is obviously massively disappointing news and I felt the sign of Neil Byrne would be a solid sign in if he's not a replacement for Matty Platt and he's a bit more competition in the central defence if he's a replacement for Matty Platt it's a poor signing and I'm going to speak about why in today's video but you look straight away that we sign Matty Platt on a free transfer we've paid a fee for Neil Byrne Matty Platt is five years younger and he's not even in his prime yet. Neil Byrne is now on the wrong side of 30 and he's obviously now going to be on the decline over the next two seasons. I don't believe the club mentioned anything in Neil Byrne's contract about having the option to trigger it for a further season. But we know that when Matty Platt signed for the club originally, he was one of only two players to not have some sort of clause in his contract to allow it to be extended by a further season. And losing Matty Platt is a big blow. I know some people will say, well, he can't really play out from the back, but he does doesn't really matter in a Graham Alexander system and I know that he's very underrated by our fan base. I'm personally a big fan of Matty Platt and I think the stats back that up. We only won one game last season in the league where Platt didn't play. That's how important he was for us. We only won once all campaign when he didn't play. That's so telling to how important he was in that side. If we have a quick comparison between Matty Platt and also Neil Byrne, last season in the league Matty Platt made 33 starts for Bradford City and two substitute appearances playing 2,937 minutes. I think he had one or two hamstring problems as well at this campaign. He scored two goals while also provided one assist and picked up 10 yellow cards in that time. He also on average won 4.4 aerial duels per 90 with a 64.2% successful pass rate and also an average rating of 6.96 according to whoscored.com. Compared though to Neil Byrne, he made 10 starts in League 2 last season for Stockport County, 6 substitute appearances as well, playing 938 minutes. He scored one goal and got no assists, also picking up two yellow cards, winning 3.3 aerial duels per 90 and a 76.7% passing accuracy with a 6.64 average rating according to whoscored.com. So just from the outside looking and obviously Platt played more games, played more minutes, more goals, more assists, more yellow cards which I guess you tr don't traditionally want, more aerial duels won per 90 but Platt also had a worse successful pass rate. In terms of their defensive stats as well, Matty Platt absolutely wipes the floor with Neil Byrne. And just to clarify, these are stats per 90 minutes or per game that they play. They're not based on total amount that they've done because obviously if Platt's played more games he's going to have done more but based on per 90 minutes Matty Platt averages 1.6 tackles per game whereas Neil Byrne averages 0.8 tackles per game. Matty Platt averages 0.9 inceptions per game, Neil Byrne averages 0.5 inceptions per game. Matty Platt gives away one foul per game, Neil Byrne gives away 0.8 fouls per game. In terms of clearances Matty Platt achieves 4.5 of them per 90 whereas Neil Byrne only averages 3.4 per 90 as well. Now you could say that because Stockport were a much better side they had less defending to do and I guess that's probably the only real positive thing you can take away from it but in terms of when they are defending Platt is doing more defending and he's doing it better than Neil Byrne but I think the fact he's five years younger as well if obviously Platt is to move on and Neil Byrne is his replacement that is a massive loss of Bradford City. I guess Platt could still sign a new contract with the football club but according to Simon Parker it seems pretty unlikely and from the outside looking in it's always whatever Simon Parker says the club are trying to slowly soft feed it into the fan base before it obviously does officially go through and if he ends up going up to League One I don't blame him for that but I just hope he doesn't go to another League Two side because 
playing against him next season is going to be a big problem for us because I do genuinely believe next season he will be one of the best centre halves in League 2 but he's 26 now if he wants to be playing as high as he can in his career he probably does need to make that step up into League 1 and unfortunately with us being such a failure on the pitch over the last couple of seasons when not, we're not, when we're not in League 1 we do lose some of these players but we go back to Charles Vernon Elliot Watt, Pody O'Connor a couple of years ago where we have this stupid role at the football club where we wait until the end of the season before even considering offering players new contracts which I don't understand it's an absolutely baffling decision because apparently it'll upset the dressing room if a player deserves a new contract like what Matty Platt does because he's been outstanding for us this season then any other player can't complain about that if they don't get off the new deal you know for example last season Liam Rydalg for example, can't be kicking up a fuss if he don't get offered a new contract, but Matty Platt does halfway through the season because Platt was consistent and brilliant throughout the whole season. Liam Rydalg was very poor. As an example, there's many other examples you could give. But if a player deserves a new contract and all the fans want to see it, I just don't understand why the club wait until the end of the season because we always seem to lose our best players on free transfers because this stupid club rule. But let's move on then to the Bobby Poynton situation. And again, this was in the exact same article that Simon Parker put out. It was an article based around Bobby Poynton but it was briefly mentioned about Matty Platt the article does then read Bradford City in strong position with Bobby Poynton's future tagging one year options on contracts in their favour has given City a solid negotiating stance going into the summer all bar Harry Chapman and Matty Platt had agreed to that clause when they put pen to paper Chapman was among those to be let go while it is looking un increasingly unlikely that Platt will agree to the offer that's been on the table since the end of the season but being able to trigger the extra year with Brad Holiday and and Bobby Poynton has taken the heat out of negotiations to tie them down for longer. Those contract discussions can continue without the clock ticking towards the deadline. That's why City had to press the button with Jamie Walker, who they had hoped would commit to a new deal. That could still happen, but the club had to make their move with the option before last Saturday's midnight deadline or the risk, or, uh, or run the risk, sorry, of losing him. Unsurprisingly, there has been interest shown in the Scott from elsewhere in the division, hence the need for the Bantams to play their cards as talks about a new contract rumbled on. In Poynton's case, the club are in a strong position because of his age. Football's compensation rules mean that providing that City offer new terms in a new deal that are the same or better than what he's on now, they would be entitled to a significant fee at any time he leaves up until the age of 24. Even if he were to turn them down, the compensation would still apply for anyone who tried to sign him. Given that Poynton does not turn 24 until January 2028, that gives them another three full seasons to play with. It was the same scenario with Elliot Watt when he left for Salford two years ago at the age of 22 he rejected City's offer to stay but they received a compensation fee on his exit again you no idea what these sort of compensation fees are because what was a big player for us in that 21-22 season especially when Mark Hughes came in but if it's 20 grand then what's the point if it's two million pounds then obviously it's excellent but I highly doubt it's the second part I do think it would have probably been the first part but fans are understandably calling for the local lad to be secured under lock and key on a long-term deal but the recent history suggests to the club might want to tread cautiously with the young talent. Remember, Reece Staunton or Finkels and Dawson have both penned long deals on the back of bright starts in the team and then faded fast. Neither of them really massively stood out though. And you got to remember, at the period in time when they were playing, in the season behind closed doors, we nearly got relegated. You know, like, the, I think Cousin Dawson, when he played, I thought was really, really poor. And no, no idea why he got a three-and-a-half-year contract. It never really made sense at the time. Reece Staunton, I could understand, left-footed, ball-playing defender. If he grew a little bit, who really knows what could have happened? But unfortunately, he got that long-term hamstring injury, and then his career kind of fizzled out, and he's now in non-league. But Bobby Poynton is majorly different to the likes of Staunton and Finkels and Dawson. Poynton has proved, week in, week out, when he plays, he's an exceptional talent at League Two level. So he does deserve that long-term contract. It's a massively different situation to Reece Staunton and also Finkels and Dawson. Staunton burst onto the scene, making his debut as a 15-year-old, the youngest player in City's history. By 18, Stuart McCall secured him on an improved four-year contract that should have seen the defender through to this summer but a serious hamstring injury just two months later ruled him out for over half of a season and he never really recovered. Staunton left Valley Parade to join Bradford Park Avenue just halfway into his new deal and he's now playing in the National League North for Spennymoor under former City captain Graham Lee. Cousin Dawson also went to Spennymoor previously and now features at the same level for their North East neighbours Blythe Spartans although I'm pretty sure did they not get relegated this season. He earned a three-year deal with City on the back of a purple pack 
match when Mark Truman and Connor Sellers took charge in the Behind Closed Doors campaign, but after a run in the team with Derek Adams, the arrival of Mark Hughes spelled the end for the defender who did not kick a ball for the club again until his contract ran down. Staunton and Cousin Dawson had attracted Premier League Academy interest throughout their time. They rose through the ranks. Both are now playing at sixth tier football, hoping a chance may come again one day. So too is Kean Skills at Scunthorpe. He was only given a one year deal with an option by City, but was arguably the best player of the three. I think, from what I saw of Kean Skills, I would still think he would be a decent last resort now I think he was a very very energetic midfielder and energy in midfield is something we massively lacked last season and someone like a point and someone like a skills would have been very good for us and you know Keane Scales scored a couple of goals and I think as a central midfielder in this system, I think he would have been a good player for us. Obviously, he hasn't played, though, for Bradford City in, what, over a year, two years now, something like that. So I'm not going to say, oh, my God, we need to bring him home because he's not exactly pulled up many trees at Scunthorpe. He's done well there, but he's not done outstanding. And I think in the future, Key and Skills could go on and be a very good Football League player, but we just never really give him that chance. The article finishes, though, with those are the warning signs with any bright young thing. I think thing is a very interesting word to describe some footballers, but point and finish his breakthrough season superbly and his last two goals underlined an undoubted talent but time is on his and City's side let's first see if he can back it up with stronger midfield competition following the signing of Anthony Sarsavic to kick off the summer business now I'm not really too sure why we need to see if he can back it up with stronger midfield competition because I would argue that it's actually harder to step up when your team needs you the most when you're in a playoff running in your breakthrough season and Poynton did that he was so key for us in our running to nearly make it into the playoffs and that for me is harder to do if you're a younger player than just trying to work your way into the side when you've got some better more experienced players around you when you need to step up you need your big players to step up you don't traditionally look to a 19 year old academy product who's had his breakthrough season but he was absolutely magnificent for us and I think it would be so naive and stupid of the club to not give him that long-term contract and give him what he deserves. He deserves to be rewarded with a wage increase and a longer-term deal for a bit of security for him and a bit of security for the club as well. It's all well and good saying compensation, but surely you'd rather the power be in your hands and you can put whatever price tag you want on him because he's clearly a very talented player. Who knows what could happen though? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Fingers crossed Platt makes a little bit of a U-turn and does sign the new contract with the football club, although that does now seem very unlikely. And at this moment in time, it doesn't look like Poynton is any closer to signing his new deal with the club but again fingers crossed he does get that new long-term contract very soon i'm gonna leave it there then for today's video if you have enjoyed please make sure to drop a like on there for me if you could try and hit 100 likes as i said at the start of today's video that'd be massively appreciated subscribe if you're new as well we are on the road to 9,000 subscribers so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on it's free to do so and it does massively help out get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below let me know your thoughts on matty platt seeming like you want me with the bantams next season and also Bradford City not really looking at massively securing Bobby Point and down to a new long-term contract as of right now. Thank you all for watching though. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you very soon for another one. Peace.